The Internet of Things revolution is here. From coffee pots to toasters, getting data and controlling devices remotely is easier than ever before. We hope you'll join SparkFun in exploring this brave new world where the physical and the digital become one. Welcome to the Fellowship of the Thing. Hello and welcome back to the Fellowship of the Things. We really hope you've been enjoying our IoT series. Last episode, we had our Wait for Treats dog house, which sent dogs' weights out to data.sparkfun. And this episode, we thought it would be interesting to pull data from the web, not just push to it. A lot of you guys thought the same thing would be interesting, so we decided that we would pull weather data. We're gonna have it mimic inside what it's doing outside. And we've got Sean hooking it up. I've installed a solenoid valve to the fire safety sprinkler system, so ideally when it rains outside, it's gonna rain inside of here. Let's try this. You wanna try it out? Hold on. Hit it! So, um, Facilities was not, not a fan of that. No, they were not okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna go dry off, and we're gonna rethink the project. <sighs> there we are. Back, all dry, facilities a little less angry at us now, maybe. You know, this is probably one of those cases we should have asked for permission before we connected to the fire sprinkler safety no. system. Yes, we probably should have done that. But here are our clouds that just light up with the weather, not rain or anything awesome like that. I'm guessing you have some sort of silly name for them? Of course I do. Uh, they are... Uh, the cl clouds that hook up to the cloud cloud. They're the cloud clouds. Really? The cloud clouds? Yes. Fine, they're the cloud clouds. If you haven't seen the video of designer Richard Clarkson making an indoor thunderstorm, there's a link in the description. But basically, in the video, he made an indoor cloud that lights up and sounds like a thunderstorm. And it's really, really cool. And we thought that was cool. And we wanted to take it a step further, hook ours up to actual weather data, and also be able to customize it to be whatever color and mood lighting we wanted. So about the physical construction of the clouds, it was actually really simple. They're just paper lanterns with pillow filler, I used polyfill, hot glued on top of them in just fun ways to kind of make it look like a cloud effect when it's lit up. Each of the clouds has a five meter strip of WS2812 LEDs. Each of these strips has 300 fully addressable LEDs, which gives us a ton of options for lighting and really makes it look awesome. Once the clouds were made and the LEDs were inside, I was able to play around with the lights and make some pretty cool weather-based effects. The first of which is just blue skies, which is this nice turquoise type color. The next was a nighttime setting, which just has a little bit of twinkling lights every now and then. Next I made an overcast because we actually get overcast in Colorado quite often, so I wanted an effect that would reflect if we had a bit of overcast. I also made a sunrise sunset setting, which is just kind of gradually going from yellow to red as if the sun were going over the horizon or the mountains as it were here in Colorado. I also made a snow effect, which is just a little bit brighter than the overcast in case we had snow. And the last is the classic thunderstorm. I'm sitting here behind the IoT apartment. This is where we can hook up electronic bits and keep them out of the way and store some of our extra components. Now, this is the controller that controls the clouds and it's connected to the internet using the SparkFun thing, the ESP8266 thing. To get this to work, we've connected it to a mobile application known as Blink, that's B-L-Y-N-K. Blink allows you to set up these virtual dashboards on your smartphone, and it's got things like buttons and LEDs and LCDs that you can use to send and receive commands to a piece of hardware, in this case the thing, across the internet. I've created a virtual dashboard in Blink that allows you to set the mode of clouds with an LCD display to see what mode you're in. In this case, there are three buttons down at the bottom. Weather, that pulls weather data from openweathermap.org and reflects it in the clouds. Then there's RGB, which allows you to select the actual RGB or red, green, blue values from a selector here. And then there's disco mode. Disco mode is reserved for party time. Here's an example of the clouds working in RGB mode. As you can see, I can just select a color from this palette and then have those reflected in the clouds. As I mentioned, this project is built based on the ESP8266 thing. It has a built-in Wi-Fi and also you can program it using the Arduino IDE. We've gotten a few WS2812 LEDs to work with it, 
However, we noticed that it couldn't quite control all 600 of them over 30 feet of wire. To help with that, we brought in a Pro Mini. The ESP8266 sends a UART command to the Pro Mini, and then the Pro Mini runs a known cycle or a known pattern of LEDs that that's controlling the clouds, but this takes care of all the internet connection. The SparkFun thing pulls openweathermap.org looking for the current weather in this location. It receives it in a JSON object. The thing then parses that looking for the current weather information as well as time data. It then uses that to figure out which pattern should be displayed in the clouds. In this case, it's blue skies outside right now. There are no clouds. So these come out as nice, big, blue, fluffy clouds. So these are our clouds. As you can see, we've got manual RGB mode, and we've got some weather stuff. And what is, sorry, what is this disco mode? It's uh, rainbow disco. Does that mean big dancing party time? Yes. 